PID 3320, Facilitating Learning Online Fundamentals, is a new elective course in the PIPD program at uh, Vancouver Community College. And um, it's focused on equipping um, educators from uh, diverse backgrounds, uh, everything from you know, high school or you know, uh, K-12, higher ed, uh, and in, even the corporate training market. Um, it's focused on equipping those educators with the necessary online engagement skills that they need to be able to effectively communicate, collaborate, and engage learners online. Uh, the course was based on a foundation of the Facilitating Learning Online Fundamentals course originally developed by BC Campus um, under the Creative Commons license uh, several years ago. And uh, this is a new iteration in the program. And what you're viewing here is the um, course outline document that went to the Education Council at uh, Vancouver Community College. And it has a course description, the, the name of the course. And you, you can see the um, uh, the where the program is applicable, prior learning assessment. And here's something that is extremely important. The course learning outcomes are identified um, here. And these are the same course learning out outcomes that I've worked with within the course program. And so I'm building off of this Education Council approved document. And from this document, I'm aligning these outcomes with the program outcomes program learning outcomes and I'm also aligning it with the education plan that was submitted to the Education Council. You see that there are four major activities, um, facilitation of online learning activity, engagement, feedback, and then reflection. And so these are the key components that um, are in the course. And so this is the key uh, institutional document that um, I built the course from. Now, the course learning outcomes that were submitted to Education Council were outcome-based, and they're big and broad enough uh, to uh, allow me as the instructional designer and the course developer to build out an outcomes-based course. I'm also going to explain how this aligns um, with the continuum from you know, competency-based to uh, outcomes-based instruction. So to um, position 3320, you need to take a look at the key things like the authentic real-world assessment. So there are three primary activities within the course that um, are authentic learning opportunities. The learner is in control. It is a learner-centered course. It's divergent in the sense that the ideas and, and skills and abilities that were developed here in the broad context can be applied in a variety of different places. There is no formal testing of skills. There's no testing as you go along. There's no tests. There's no uh, very specific uh, competency-based measurement and there's uh, very little teacher control and it's not really content centered. The context for learning is the online learning environment. So this course fits very, very clearly on the far side or you know, it's a fully uh, outcomes-based education course. Um, and the analysis, evaluation and creation that is significant in this course puts at the top Bloom's taxonomy. Now, I also want to touch on a couple more factors that contributed to swaying my decision for outcomes-based uh, instruction. Even though some of the students were unfamiliar with the ideas um, and some of the activities, this was not necessarily a beginner's level course and not really an introductory course. It really was a course that was focusing on the big picture and students were going to be integrating previous knowledge knowledge of collaboration, communication. Um, some of the tools that were being used have been used in different settings. So this is an integration course. And one of the most important things that you use to determine if your outcome is based is what are the assessment activities. There were no tests. There were no you know, uh, no, uh, no measurement of competencies. Um, all the activities were real, they're genuine, genuine um, and they could be used in an actual setting, either an actual job setting or they were a simulation. Um, and the, the context, the integration and knowledge and skills, all the skills that needed to be developed happened within the context of the authentic learning opportunities, which is the direct opposite of a competency-based course, which focuses on those step-by-step -step discrete skills and testing of those skills and the measurement of those skills. Um, so the learner, students were uh, in competency-based courses are focused on that learning process and procedures, whereas in an outcomes-based course, you know, it is what they're producing and the process of learning, the process of learning is a key thing that contributes to what they are producing. So this is clearly an outcomes-based course.
Because this was an outcomes-based course, uh, and I um, have been working with the outcomes-based uh, Fink's taxonomy approach to designing courses, I immediately went to the development of my three-column table and evaluation plan. And the three-column table, which I'm going to talk about and, and show you, is a, a classical way to organize and plan for uh, an outcomes-based scenario. When, in developing my three-column table, I like to put the course description at the top, so I've got a context of what you know is going to be in, in the calendar. But perhaps one of the most important aspects of my design is the development of the big, hairy, audacious goal. This is what the learner will be able to do when they're done, months after. What are, what is the takeaway? Who will they become? You know what differences are going to be in their lives. And so learners will be able to build and manage and sustain a diverse online learning community through the creation and facilitation of a variety of synchronous and asynchronous collaborative engagement approaches. Collaborative synchronous engagement, they're building an online community. These are big outcomes. So if they can build it here in this scenario, they can build it in their own courses. And this is the goal. You, you establish uh, the ability to do these things in a simulated scenario, or in some people's cases, they um, were encouraged, encouraged to do this in, an actu in their own actual setting. And so this is an outcomes-based course. So with the outcomes-based course, I um, then go to uh, Fink's taxonomy. And um, now, in, in, in the actual Fink's taxonomy, D. Fink doesn't really have a big heritageous goal. This is my variation. Uh, D. Fink actually built his, his uh, approach in the late 90s, and it was focused on providing um, engaging experiences within the classroom. And I broadened this to, to build uh, in uh, uh, effective learning environments. So I'm, I'm expanding his approach from experiences to the whole environment, still including the notion of the experience. Experience. So I essentially have four main outcomes that I was looking to uh, realize in this course. And these outcomes are aligned directly with the main course outcomes. Now, uh, I had five main course outcomes, but it was easy enough to combine these and, and, to, and to just modify them slightly to make it fit within the taxonomy. And so I, I like to have sort of one outcome per module as well. And so that, this is part of the design process. So the first outcome, build and sustain community and supporting diverse you know, online uh, learners, right? So this is you know the creation posting of a video, introduction video, and then monitoring that, right? Now you'll notice the assessment is the assessment that happens at the end, and it's the same assessment all the way through. Now, with outcomes-based instruction, you can have assessment in each of the modules. In this particular case, we had a uh, an assessment at the end because if a person could do all these particular pieces, the building of the introduction video, the creation of a synchronous collaboration session and monitoring it and managing and coordinating it. and then establishing the asynchronous uh, session and the monitoring and, and uh, 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 supporting it and then reflecting on all these ideas as part of managing the online learning environment and reflecting on these things and reporting back either in the form of a pay it forward video exit interview or, or a paper really would show whether or not the learner did accomplish the outcome so this three column table fits um, this outcomes based approach and this is my primary design document you'll see an alignment of outcomes activities and the assessment now the assessment there's a reflection component in each of the modules if you when you take a look at the actual other course documents you will see that in the uh, um, module instructions the students are required to reflect on these ideas and make note of them because they're they're going to be added to it so with outcomes based um, courses, you don't necessarily have to do the immediate um, assessment component in each module. You can defer it to a major project at the end. So with the outcome map, I, I try to keep it as simple and open and flexible as possible. Uh, my outcomes very, very seldom change. I might modify them slightly down the road, but the, act the activities can change and so can the assessment. So if you've got well-defined outcomes, um, you, can, you don't necessarily have to change those and you don't have to go back to Education Council, but you can easily change the activity in the assessment. Now, here's the next piece of this. So in addition to the three column table, I also work with something called an evaluation plan. This comes directly out of PIDP 3210, the curriculum development course. And um, uh, also this comes out of the uh, assessments course 3230. And developing an, uh, an evaluation plan is really taking a look at the learning opportunities that you want to do and aligning those learning opportunities with the outcomes. So I, I had four things. 
introduction video that welcomes diverse communities, the synchronous collaboration, asynchronous collaboration, and the reflection on learning. So th those four authentic learning opportunities are mapped out in the four modules and they address the five course outcomes. So this evaluation plan and mapping of the course outcomes provides an alignment perspective that will um, assure me um, the uh, success that I want or ensure me the, the success that I want with this course as it rolls out. So in addition to the three column table and my evaluation plan, I like to build out uh, an implementation document or a to-do, a master to-do list. And I always put the course outcomes at the top of the list. This is my measuring stick. This assures me that I am doing the things that I want to do. I'm always looking at that alignment of outcomes, activities, and assessment. Well, guess what? Here's the outcomes, and here are all the activities. But more so of the activities, these are all the things that I need to do to get the course going. So um, this is a long, long list, and there's a lot of activities that are a lot of different things that I need to do. I point to some activities that I'm going to build out in the course, uh, for example, uh, some of the things that I'm going to look at as actual activities. But this is actually a to-do list, and it addresses things like setting up the modules in Moodle, um, you know, testing different things out, removing certain things, creating a handbook. So these are very, very open, generic, high-level master to-do items that need to be done, which will then be a, a guide to what I do in the implementation phase, right? So when we take a look at some of the actual module activities, well, yeah, I, I am looking at the reflection on learning. And to, I wanted to establish a pattern within all the modules where I was focusing on the activity of communication, the activity of collaboration, the activity of fee forward, and the activity of reflection. So this, these, are, these are sort of other key priorities. So in addition to the outcomes that I have at the top, I have sort of key focused activities that I want to make sure that I'm addressing. And then, you know, I, I take a look at the example of a day I want to build, and I point to the presentation, and then I point to all the different resources. So as you go through this master's to-do list, you'll see that it is huge. There's all kinds of items. Now, the actual to-do list that I end up using is slightly edited, and I'll show you a, a quick copy, but it, it really came about by me whittling away and taking things away. Um, the general process of building an overall um, implementation outline is to really put everything imaginable down in the sequence, in the order that you think it's going to happen. And then when you start to build it out, you modify it. This is what my modified to-do list looked like, and this is what I ended up with. Now, as you can see, my master to-do list has got a lot of things crossed off. And there's some things that aren't completely crossed off. I, I, I will share a PDF version of this. Uh, some of the things I'm still working on and some of the things I'm thinking about doing at a later date. Um, but you'll also notice if you were to compare my first you know, implementation list, um, there's a lot of things that have been edited out. I've, I've modified this. I've, I've stripped away things. And as I started to build things out and check items off the list, I was able to reduce things. And so your design process you know, usually is an iterative process of stripping away ideas and then sometimes adding some things back in. The whole canoe analogy is something I added in later on. And it's something I'm still uh, thinking about and I'm probably going to be creating a video to deal with it and, and talk about continuous intake. I've already created a continuous intake video to explain aspects of how the course works, but um, I want to incorporate this canoe analogy at some point. And so as you can see, a lot of things are crossed off. Some things are still there. On I'm still you know, thinking about contemplating some of the things. So this course has been realized. This course has been up and running for a little while. And this really is part of my design process. So the realization of my design process is this course that many of you have already been through. Uh, and if you haven't, I, I strongly encourage it. So um, I will be explaining, you know, how I went from the design documents to this actual course in the next video example, and um, by pointing to some of the other resources. And for those of you who've been through this course, you'll have a sense of how things work. So um, I'm looking forward to sharing with you the next stage in the development process. But good design and good course development starts with a 
fundamental understanding of, of the difference between CompC-based and outcomes-based instruction and a very effective design document. That three-column table for me is the ideal document. If you're doing CompC-based instruction, the DACOM will be your planning document that will really drive all the work that you're doing and give you the foundation and the impetus for building out the most effective implementation strategy and help you to realize the best design uh, and implementation of your online course.